Seches Kedushin Daf Ches begins with Rav Yosef explaining a source of Halacha that he said. Then it gets into more cases of Kedushin, um, different types of Kedushin, which were not done perfectly as to whether they work or not. The Gemara will also give us the Sugya of Chalipin, which is the central Shas Sugya of Kenyan Chalipin. So let's begin. Rav Yosef has just said Halacha that if you want to use Shavah Kesef, if you want to use an object which is not actual money, but it has value, and you want to use it as an instrument of value, it has to have a fixed value. You have to know how much it's worth, or you have to have evaluate it and know how much it's worth. So Rav Yosef is going to give two sources for this Halacha, and then we will dispute them. So Rav Yosef's first source is from Rav Yosef discussing the redemption of an Eved, an Eved Ivri, who's redeeming himself. So over there, the Pasuk says, Mi kesef miknasai. You're allowed to use kesef miknasai. I use the word kesef. So there's a price that teaches me you can only use kesef, actual money. You can't use shavu kesef. You can't use what the Mishnah calls grain and tools. Uh, tfua and kalim. So the Lumar says, Tfua and kalim are shavu kesef. Why can't you use them? What would be the explanation, Rabbi Yosef is asking, why would you be allowed to use only money and not other objects which are worth money like tfua and Kalim. So the Lumar says, what are we referring to? If you want to say that this is teaching me that you can't use Shavakesif at all to redeem an Evid Ivri, that's not true, because the same Pasuk says the words Yashav Geulasai. I have a Josh that says the word Yashav is extra, could have just said Geulasai. And that word Yashav is to teach me that you could use Shavakesif just like Kesif in the redemption of an Evid Kenari. So we're not talking about all Shavakesif. So what then? So the Muslim, maybe we're talking about Shavakesif, which is not worth a pruta. So he says, that can't be either, because that would be the same for Kesef and Shavu Kesef. You can't use Kesef, that's not worth a pruta either. It must be, it's referring to Shavu Kesef, but you don't have a set value. You don't know how much is worth exactly. So the Gemara says, now those who dispute Rav Yosef, how do they explain this? What is uh, excluded here by Mekesef Meknase? What type of Shavu Kesef can't you use? What type of Tu and Kim can you not use? So Gemara says, this is to teach me that you can't use them as Chalipin. You can use them to buy and sell, to redeem, you can use them as an instrument of money, but you can't give uh, grain and then say, when you take the grain, you're being makna the eva to me as a kinin chalipin, which is when you exchange one object, it transfers ownership of another object, but it's not really a sale. Now, you can't use, the Gemara is saying, you cannot redeem an evid with chalipin, you have to use an actual give money to the owner, and that's how you redeem in money, or shava kesef. The Gemara asks, if Rav Nachman holds, you can never use fruits, which is included in tool, you can never use that for chalipin. Chalipin has to be kalim or things like that, uh, a handkerchief or something. So then I wouldn't need this puzzle to tell me that you can't use um, tevua for chalipin, because I already know that. You can never use tevua for chalipin. So what then does this mean? So my other person has a different shot, which ends up disagreeing with Rivesef. The Gemara says, that uh, the those who disagree with Rav Yosef will say that what this pasuk is for is to teach me that you can't use tefuah or kalim, which are worth less than a shavar pruta. I said earlier that you can't use kesa for that either. So when it says there's an extra chiddush here that you can't use it because you may think that kesa you can't use because if it's not a shavar pruta, it's not worth anything. There's no reason to accept it. But tevua, grain or fruits or something like that, people get pleasure out of right away. They don't have to go sell it. So it doesn't really matter how much it's worth. It has a value beyond its actual d- dollar amount. It has a value in the fact that you can do things with it. You get a hana out of it. And therefore, she might be mocking herself with that right away, or he might be mocking the Evet. And therefore, this we need the Pasuk of Mekhazah. But not that you you can't use that. All right, Rebbe gives another source for Zalacha, that if you want to use objects as Shava Kesef, it has to have a fixed value. It has to be evaluated. See, so quotes of Baisa, that says if somebody wants to use a calf for pidin a ben, and he has his firstborn bachar, he needs to give five slaim to the kain. He wants to give a calf instead, or he wants to give a talus for a pidin a ben. So he can't do that. It's valueless. It says loyom or klum. It doesn't work. Now, if he says this calf is worth five slaim, I'm giving it for my son, or this talus is worth five slaim, and I'm, and I'm giving that for my son, then it works. But what's the difference? Why, if he says, here's the talus, or here's the calf, it's no good, but if he says it's worth five slam, it, it is good. Um, if you want to tell me that it's not the first case, it, it's not equal to five slam, so what would be the havamina? Why would I think that you can give something which is not worth the value that is required? 
so therefore, it must be saying that in the first case, it's not a fixed amount. And in the second case, he's saying that I've already evaluated and I know it's worth five stolim. And therefore, you can accept this. That proves it. Right? So it's opinion that Shavikasev always has to have a fixed known value that is equal to what you need it to be. So the Gemara answer is no, not necessarily. It could be referring to where it didn't have the five stolim value. And the Chiddush is, you may think that the Kayin could say, it's worth five slime to me, even though it's not worth five slime on the market. Oh, I need this, and therefore it's worth five slime to me. And you find that, you find that Rav Kahana took a handkerchief, a uh, yarmulke kind of thing, the the thing that the Chacham would use to cover their heads. He took that as Pidin Aben, even though he wa- it wasn't worth five slime. And he said, because for me it's worth five slime. And Rav Ashi said that that only applies to Rav Kahana because he's a tremendous Hamachachim and he needs that uh, article of clothing to cover his head. But everybody else can't do that. And like Marba Rav Ashi, who purchased a, one of these head garments from the mother of Rabba of Kubi, it was worth 10 and she bought it for 13 zuz most likely. So therefore, you see that they are able to value that higher, but for most people, you're not allowed to do that. The Gemara now begins another case. This case, Robert Rabbi Lazar, says if a man gives a woman a dinar and says, be mekadesh to me, be miskadesh to me with this money. Money is a hundred and a dinar is worth 25. So it's not, it's not the full amount. So he said a money and he gave her less than that. So Rabbi Eliezer says the halacha is that she is mekudeshes and he has to pay the rest of the money that he promised her, and the reason is because we view it as if he's saying, "I want you to be mekudesh to me now with whatever I'm giving you, I'll t- on the condition that I give you money at some point." Not that the kedushin should take place with a money, but I'm promising you a money for this kedushin, and then anything I give you, which is worth a pruta, is a valid kedushin. And she, by accepting it, is mekabel the dinner. That's a case of kedushin, and then she's going to get a money, and that's what she knows. And he quotes from Huna name of Rav, who says that anytime you say Almanas, it's like you said from now. So therefore, she's Mukadesh's right now. From the moment that she receives the dinner, she's Mukadesh's. There's just a Tanai to be fulfilled. And when the Tanai is fulfilled, the Kedushan is Chal now, not when it's finally fulfilled. So, where's the Kasha from this? Seems to be a Brysa that contradicts this. The Brysa says if somebody gives a woman uh, Kedushan and he says, be Miskadesh to me with a money, and then he gives her a little bit and he's counting out the rest of the money. Um, and then one of them decides they want to change their mind. They want to back out. So even if you're holding by the last coin, the last dinner, if there's anything left in the mud that hasn't been given, they can still back out. So clearly then, she's not miskadish right away. So how come in our uh, halach, how come Rabbi Lassa said she is miskadish right away? So one gives two answers. One of first answer is here, we're not talking about the same case. Here he said, monezu, this money. So this money, then it's all kinds of kedushin. It's not correct to say that the Kesef Kedushin is whatever he gave her at the time, and the money is the tonight for later. This money, that's Kesef Kedushin. Now, the Gemara says, hold on a second, that can't be correct, because the next case in this very price talks about Manazu. So obviously, this case, not talking about Manazu, it's somewhere he just said, on oh, me with a money, not this money. Now, let's see the second case. So the second case is, if he says to her, be miskadesh to me, with this money, and it ends up that is something wrong with it. Either it's not a full value, something missing, or it's made out of copper instead of the gold that she showed it, that she thought it was. Um, then it's no good. The condition is no good because she was fooled. It's not what she agreed to. If, however, it's a dinar, it's a regular dinar, there's just something bad about it, then it is mikudeshes. Now, the Gemara explains later, when we say that it's a copper one, it has to be that she didn't know it was copper, otherwise she agreed to it. So either she received it at night or she received it mixed amongst other coins that she didn't see. In the case of the dinar that was a bad dinar, it still can achieve its full value. It's just hard to get people to accept it. But the full value is there. Otherwise, it would be something she didn't agree to. Either way, our point is that this Mishnah, the second case is talking about where he says manazu. So the first case has to be talking about where he just says mana. Otherwise, it's the same case. Why is there a different halacha? So the answer is no. It's all one halacha. The beginning is talking about manazu, and it doesn't spell it out. And then it explains it in the seifa. And it says that uh, you read it as it follows. You read it that if somebody gives an Isha Kedushin, and he says, be miskashim with this mana, and then he's counting it out, getting to the mana, as long as he didn't give her the full amount, she could still change her mind, or he could, anybody could back out. And that's only if he said mana zu. 
And then the Bryce continues explaining the halachas of Manazu as we saw in the rest of the case. Now, the Gemara says you have to learn this way. Because if you want to learn that the first case, the ratio is talking about we said Manastam, and you're telling me even there it's not Mukadesh, even though he didn't promise her this money. He just said in general a money. It's still, you have those halachas. So then if it's Manazu, how could there be a Chiddush there? There's no Chiddush. For sure, if it's Monazu, it's Eina Mekadeshes. So what will be the Chiddush of saying Monazu once you already told me that Monastam is not Mekadeshes? Monazu, that's not a Kasha. It could just be that we said Monazu to show us that the first case is talking about Monastam. If you wouldn't have said the second case of Monazu, I would have thought the first case is Monazu. But Monastam is Mekadeshes. Then you have to tell me the second case of Monazu, and that way I know the first case must have been Monastam. It's a standard procedure that we often see in Chazal saying in cases like this. Anyway, this is all the Gemara's first answer as to why Rabbi Elezer said that she's Mekadeshes right away, and in this process she's not Mekadeshes. Now the gives another answer. Ravashi says that the here it's different. Because since he's counting it out, she's waiting for it all to be received. If he sees her counting, if she sees him counting it out, so then she's getting it, so she's not agreeing until the count is finished. But if he just says, Bim's Gash me with the money, and he gives her a dinner, so she understands she's getting the money at some later point, but she accepts the Kedushin right now. Gemara now goes into the lachas of mashkon for Gedushin. A mashkon is a collateral where you give somebody something to hold until you can give him the payment that you owe him. Gemara quotes Rava says in the Nachman that if somebody gives a woman a mashkon until he could give her the money, he says, Be miskadesh to me with the money, and he gives her a mashkon to hold instead. So there's no Gedushin here. The money he didn't give her, and the mashkon she doesn't get to keep. So neither of those is kesef for Gedushin. So Rava asks the Kashtar of Nachman. We have a price that says if somebody is Mikadesh with a mashkon, she is Mikadesh. So obviously you see that this works. A mashkon itself works for a Kedushin. Kumar says, no, that's not talking about where he gave her a mashkon for the money that he intends to give her until he gives it to her. It's talking about where he gave her a mashkon that he had from someone else who owed him money. That someone owed this potential husband money, that means it was a loan that he could collect. And it was a mashkon that was a security securing that collectible. And he took the mashkon, the entire loan, and he gave it to the woman. He gave her the account receivable as well as the security. That is a Kenyan that she gets to keep. She may not keep the mashkon, but she'll get the repayment instead of it if it comes to that. Now, not only that, but the mashkon for a loan belongs to the person who owns it. And you see that from Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak said, the Torah says to give back a mashkon to the person who needs it. He says, that's charity. If you don't own it, giving it away is not charity. So obviously the person who's holding the mashkon is considered to be the owner in the sense that he, it's tzedakah when he returns it. We want to make a related incident that happened with the children of Rafuna Bar Oven that they bought in Amsa, a maidservant, with a couple of prutais, but they didn't have the money to pay it. So instead they gave a bar of silver to the sellers as a mashkon until they could. And then the price of the amsa, the value went up, and the sellers wanted to back out of the deal. They wanted a higher sale price. So they came to Ravami with the claim that they paid for it already, and they shouldn't be able to, they, that the seller should not be able to cancel. So he said, no, you didn't, because what did you give? The prutos you didn't give. And then Aska, the silver bar that you gave, is not going to stay by him. So therefore, you didn't give any payment for it. And the mashkan doesn't count. There is some tarah here that the... A case of Kedushin can't be the money that's owed or the mashko in which we've said. The Gemara now quotes a price with another case. The case is that a man gives a woman a money and he says, Be miskadish to me with this money. And she takes it and she destroys it. She throws it into the yam, she throws it into the fire or any other place in which it's destroyed. So Allah says she's not Mekadesh because she's saying, I don't want to. And she, she throws it away as if in revulsion. So the Gemara makes a deal. The Gemara says it's only if she destroyed it that she's not Mekadeshes. That sounds like if she threw it back at him, she is Mekadeshes. So why should that be? She's clearly saying, I don't want it. So the Gemara says, no, either way she's not Mekadeshes. It's a bigger Chidesh if she destroys it, because now she owes it back to him. So you may think, since she's Mekhaev herself to him, because now she has to pay it for him, she is therefore accepting it as Kedushin. The reason she threw it away is because she wants to check him to see how what kind of temper he has if he's going to get angry. We now bring another Brysa where he offers her Kedusha and she says to give it to somebody else. Depending on how she phrases it will be what she means. So if the so we have two versions here. We have actually four versions, two and two. So the first one is where she says, give it to my father or your father. 
So it depends how she phrases it. If she says, just give it to my father or to your father, she's saying, I don't want to give it to them. So she's refusing the Kiddushin. Now, if she says, I'll be miskadosh to you on the condition that you give it, that they should receive it for me. So now she's saying that I will be miskadosh when you give it to them. I want to be miskadosh to you, but I would rather the money should go to my father or to your father. Now, we have to say both my father and your father. My father is a big Yechidosh that it's no good, even though she... Uh, that it's no good, even though it's her own father, when she said, give it to my father. And your father, that it is good, even though she said... That it is good when she said, on the condition that you give it to your father, that he should be Mechabal, even though it's the husband's own father, it still works as long as she wants him to be Mechabal, the cast of condition for her. Now, we have another Brisa that says, it's not my father, your father, but just some random person. And it's the same thing. If she says, give it to your uncle, then she's not Mechabal, and she's saying, no, I don't want it. But if she's saying, on the condition that you give it to your uncle, he's Mechabal, he's Mechabal for me, then it works. Now, why do we need both these? Why do we need my father, your father, as well as the case of Yaakov. So the Gemara says you need it. Um, if you would have said only the case of my father and your father, I would think that's the only situation in which she says, if she says that they should be a on my behalf, that it works because she trusts them. Some random individual, you would think that it's not going to work because she doesn't trust. And if you would have only said the case of the Yaakov, the random individual, so then you would say that that is the only case where the condition is no good, because what does she care about that guy? She's obviously saying, I don't want it. But if she says, it's my father or your father, where she has a sense of closeness to them, she's saying, I do want it. that If she just says, give it, she's still saying, she's still throwing it away, and she's saying, I don't want it. Gemara now quotes another case. You have a rice that says, if he says to her, be a to me with this money, and she says, put it on the rock. So she's not in Mikudeshes, unless the rock belonged to her. Then she's saying, put it over there in my property, and that is Kedushin. On this, Rav Bibi asked, what if the rock belonged to both of them in partnership? Then Mara leaves that as Teku. Question stands not answered. Next case is if she says, Hiskachi, is if he says, be Mikudesh to me with this loaf of bread, and she says, give it to the dog. So there she's not Mikudeshes, she's refusing it, unless the dog was hers, and of course, then she is Mikudeshes. And then now, Rav Mari asked, what if the dog was chasing her? Do we say that when she's saying you give it to the dog, she wants to save herself, and with that benefit that she's being saved from the dog, she is miskadesh? Or do we say he, she could say, listen, you have to save me anyway. You have a mitzvah of the Sam and Adam Reacha, so that was your mitzvah. I don't owe anything to you. I'm not miskadesh to you with that, Hannah. That question stands as well. Take it. And then our last case is if he gives her a loaf of bread and she says, give it to the poor person. She's not Mekudashes. She's again refusing.